These are white gel pens. They're a really great way to add highlights or life to your illustration. These are the two that I have tried in the past. However, after spending a little bit of time on the internet, I realized there are a lot that I have not tried yet. We're gonna put them to the test and figure out which one's the best. Starting with the least, nope, that's not it. <laughs> Starting with the least expensive, we have the Secura Jelly Roll. You've probably heard of this before. I purchased this for $1.35. And as you can see, it it's having a little bit of that, uh, I don't know what you would call that. It's very opaque, so it passes that test. Something I like to do with gel pens is to be able to make quick, tiny little dots. Uh, it's not bad. I feel like it could be better if you stick there and make a dot and like do little swirly motions. It does perfect dots. Another thing that matters to me with white gel pens is being able to make like long lines without it drying up like in the process. So we're gonna make just try to fill this entire space here with a line and see what happens. Ooh, I'd say it passes that test pretty good. Okay, my last two tests include it has to go over an alcohol-based marker and watercolor. So Ooh, it's not as opaque on top of this but there is definitely some ghosting of the colors through that and let's test it on the watercolor yeah pretty similar to that i'm definitely seeing some weirdness happening where it's not drawing as opaque as in other spots so that's interesting on to the next one next up we have the secura glaze gel pen in white this one actually comes with a little uh, rubber bit that's covering your nib so you just Pull that off and then you can start writing. So that's how you know it's a brand new pen. The Cura. I bought this for $1.80. Yeah, it's really not showing up at all. Oh, it's actually turning white over time. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, that's really cool. I'd never heard of this pen before, but now let's try the length test. I don't like it to give up on me halfway through, so. Let's see what happens. Space. Okay, there we go. So yeah, it starts really transparent and then over time it becomes opaque. But it's really good at doing the dots and it's really good at like filling in spaces. So definitely the less ink you put down, the faster it dries and then the quicker it becomes opaque because like where I was adding like a lot more ink and creating little swirly dots, they're still kind of transparent. The square is still a little transparent. And like here where I was going very slowly, so more ink was being deposited onto the paper, it's still more transparent. Oh, you can't even see where I'm putting it on this. That's kind of scary. Like if you're drawing something, you kind of just have to trust your gut with that. <laughs> yeah, same thing. I really cannot see it. I can see a little bit of shininess. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I just gave this pen a little Google <laughs> and it's supposed to, the reason it's called the glaze pen is because it actually is supposed to leave like a raised effect, which yeah, I can feel it. Oh, the, this feels really cool with the dots. Where I was going quickly, I don't feel any raised surfaces, but where I was going slowly, I can feel a little bit. And then the dots, I feel it a lot. Barely a raised surface. Like, <laughs> that's a bit of a stretch. It's been like two minutes maybe, and this one's still very transparent. I can't see it at all over this like light purple color. And the reason I'm testing it over alcohol-based marker and watercolor are because those are the two mediums that I use the most. So for it to be the best white gel pen for me, it has to be able to work on these two mediums. So far they've both kind of failed watercolor. We'll come back to this and give it like <laughs> some more time, but let's test the next gel pen. Next up is the Uniball Signo Angelic Color gel pen in 0.7 millimeter with white ink. This one's much thinner than the last couple that I've used. It doesn't glide as smoothly as the other two either. It's a bit scratchier feeling. This one I paid $2.30 for. Dotted lines. Oh, this one has that gel pen pet peeves. You see how it's like fading out and then there's the strokes. Like they, they suggest like drawing very lightly to avoid that, but look, it's still fading out as I go. And this is a brand new pen. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> did you see what that did? All right, do the dot test. Put something under this so it's not bouncing up and down. All right, now the length test. See how it does with long lines and squiggles. Yeah, you see how it like just gives out? I'm not like changing the pressure at all. It just randomly stops working. That is one of my biggest gel pen pet peeves. <laughs> all right, let's test it on the marker. Not bad, and then on the watercolor. Yeah, they're all kind of, oh, I didn't have that in view, sorry. But as you can see, it's barely showing up on the watercolor. 
They're all kind of failing that one, which is sad. This one's not doing too well on the marker. Oh, did okay right there, maybe. So yeah, that was the Uniball Signo Angelic color. Yeah, for $2.30, I would expect a little bit more out of this pen. <laughs> that one's a bit of a disappointment. Next up, this pen is the same brand as the last one. It's the Uniball Signo Gel Pen. I guess it's the classic version. We've got a much thicker barrel with the metal tip and pretty cool cap that fits on the other end. <laughs> Wow, this one's fun to use. It's very smooth, like the, the the 0.7 millimeter one felt scratchy. This one feels smooth and like you can see the ink coming out very well. This one cost me $2.50. See if it fills in a square very good. This one is very nice. <laughs> I've used these ones in the past. These are some of my favorite ones. This is my go-to gel pen currently, but even this one will cause some troubles. So let's see if it passes the tests. I have here. Yeah, see, <clears throat> do the dots. It's actually pretty good at the dots. I like that. And then the swirly dots. Very good. And now, oh my gosh, would you stay down? Now the length test. This is where I think this one usually fails. Doing pretty good. Oh, dried up a bit there. Oh, it's just. I am not missing the paper, it just stops writing sometimes. I like to have a nice consistent line because sometimes I need to do straight lines for things and if it's gonna stop working on me, I have to go back and draw again and that's just something that drives me nuts and it's my biggest pet peeve. Maybe it's just not possible for a pen to be able to do that, but that's what I'm looking for and I'm gonna test for it anyway. All right, let's take it over to the marker. Probably more opaque than the last couple. <laughs> and let's see if it shows up on Ooh, hey, this one wins on the watercolor. So I just noticed that the last one we tested, it's like causing discoloration. I don't know if you can see that. It's like made it darker instead of white. So that Signo, what is it, the angelic? So far, <laughs> I don't know which one's the best, but I know that one's the worst. Yeah, Do not recommend that one. Let's test the next one. Ooh, this one has a very thick barrel. <laughs> this is the Pentel Hybrid Gel Grip Gel Pen in 1.0 millimeters white. Very uh, grippy. <laughs> this one's a bit scratchier than the Signo. It's having a little hard time writing. Sometimes it just sort of gives out. She's in my bad beef. This one I also paid $2.50 for. It works really well if you keep going over the same spots. It's when you do like the straight lines and the even the square, like it's a bit streaky, if you can see that. <laughs> All right, now the length test. Oh, not bad for that one. There are parts where it is not coming out as cleanly. So there's like a difference in color almost, like opaqueness. But that's not bad. Not bad, not bad. All right, over the alcohol marker. Ooh, it feels really smooth on this mixed media paper. I'm seeing something for the bra, the Signo, the Uniball Signo broad is actually calling causing some discoloration on the outside of the gel pen. Can you see that where it like, the watercolor is actually becoming darker? That's something to be aware of. <laughs> I would call this a pretty basic pen. I feel like just the opaqueness is better in the Signal Broad and it's the same price, so it beats it out. Next pen. I bought two different white Sharpies, but the first one we're going to test is this water-based one. I think it's actually a marker, but I didn't realize that when I bought it, so we're gonna test it anyway. <laughs> There you go. So this is the Sharpie. Ooh, this is fun to write with. More of a paint pen, obviously. <laughs> so you're not gonna be able to get little fine details with this one. This one cost me $2.60. I bet this one will fill in a square real good. Oh yeah. Okay, this one's not having any of the problems that I hated about gel pens, but it's not a gel pen, so that makes sense. <laughs> See, there's very, it's a lot of consistency. Ooh, it's very good at doing dots. And since it is a paint marker, you gotta be careful about not brushing up against it. Although something I'm noticing is it becomes a little less opaque over time. Like where I just let go of it, it seems brighter than where I painted in the past. And I can see it becoming more gray looking over time. And over the alcohol marker. Oh yes, very nice. <laughs> I like that. And then on the watercolor. Oh, hey, we finally got something that shows up on watercolor. Like out of all the last ones, look at that. That one wins hands down. So it loses points because it can't make fine details, but if you do bigger illustrations, this is definitely something to consider. 
Now these next pens I was only able to find in a three pack and only on Amazon. These are the Fine Point White Gel Pens by Art and Fly. They actually have a rubber grip and metal tip with a cap that fits on the other end, which actually costs $8.99 for the set. Ooh, they're very scratchy. <laughs> I can't even get a consistent line to write with on this one. $8.99, three, which comes out to about $3 each. This one is kind of sucky. <laughs> Ooh, see how scratchy that is? You can see the strokes. Ugh. I think we have a new contender for worst. Well, yeah, you can see like the scratchiness of it. Mm. Now for the length test. I don't have very high hopes for this. All right. It's actually making funny sounds. It's like squeaking. Oh, did you hear that sound? Meow. Ugh, sometimes it just doesn't really work. Yeah, this one... Uh, man, and I have three of these stupid pens. <laughs> okay, do not recommend these ones. This is the Art and Fly White Gel Pen. See, this one really has no excuse of being $3 a pen. <laughs> when you can get a Secura Classic Gel Pen for $1.35 and it's better. So, <laughs> yeah, this guy, out of all the ones I've tested so far, this one is the loser. I have no idea how you pronounce this, but this is the most highly recommended gel pen to me. It's the Sakura Decores gel pen in 0.6 millimeter. Comes in the color pastel white. It's definitely the most uniquely shaped pen. Oh, fancy. Cap, cap fits on the other end. Wonderful, beautiful, thank you very much. It's like gold detailing, very pretty. Let's test that one out. I have high hopes for this puppy. You can like feel the ball in there moving up and down. Is that how pens work? I don't know. It started off a little scratchy, but it's definitely warming up as I use it. This one cost me $3.30. It's a very juicy pen, so yeah, I expect it to do that pretty well. Nice. This one definitely seems to do best if you move slowly. Like quick motions, it does that scratchy texture. But if you go slow, you can get a very nice line. So if I go slow and then speed up, you can kind of see the difference. I'm not like blown away, but I like it. I feel like it's also getting better the more I use it. All right, let's do the length test. Oh, it's giving up a little bit there. That's better. Come on. You can do it. We're running out of paper here. It's a pretty consistent line there. Hey, I like that. Yeah, this one definitely does its best the slower you go with it. Let's test it over some marker. That's pretty good better than the art and fly over watercolor oh it's actually showing up although I'll give it some time to see if it fades into it you can definitely see it compared to the art and fly so far only the paint pen and this one are actually showing up but I think it's starting to fade into the watercolor so we'll check back with that <laughs> one is definitely on par with the uniball signal broad pen although the broad one has a thicker line um, the only place where I think it takes the cake. The broad one had some discoloration and this one is definitely more opaque on the watercolor. Next up is another paint pen. It's the Posca paint pen. I got it in white and I got the finest tip I could find. Ooh, I like this a lot. This one cost me $3.50. Oh, I am loving this actually. Now that I'm getting a little bit more control, let's fill in the square. Oh yes, very nice. You can barely see any strokes at all in that. Okay, good. Let's go slow at first. Speed up. Yeah, you can see how it's like a bit grayer there and it's whiter there. All right, let's do the length test. See how long it can go and be consistent. It's a bit textured, if that makes sense. And this one definitely seems to fade over time. Like it becomes more gray, but it's still white compared to the black paper. See what it looks like on the alcohol marker. Hmm, I like it. Then on top of the watercolor. Ooh, very good, very good. Yes. It seems like if you want to do watercolor, paint pens seem to be the best thing for highlights. But even that one is kind of fading into it, whereas the Sharpie one is still very opaque. And even here too, like you can see it's it's not as white. It's becoming like a light purple and a light yellow and a light green color instead of white. But yeah, that is the Uni Pasca pen. Next up is another paint marker. It's the Rayme 
two millimeter. Oh, this is a thicker. This is a thick one. <laughs> this is the Raymay fluorescent board marker pen. I don't know, it was recommended to me as a white gel pen. It's obviously not a white gel pen, but let's uh, see how it works. Oh, it's sealed again. Come on. Release. Paint pens, you gotta prep it. Oh, I see it's coming. <laughs> this is so fat. Ray May. Dude, do you see how it's like becoming gray? This one's not good, not good on paper. I don't know if it's for something else, but this one cost me $4.25. Ew, this one's kind of gross. Ew, not liking this. <laughs> Let's just get this over with. I don't like this one. <laughs> you see the, what happens as it dries? That's weird. I don't know what this is meant to be written on. It doesn't look fluorescent. It almost looks like crinkly paper. Like a, it's like a tissue texture. But let's test it on alcohol marker. Yep, works really well on that. Oh, it's starting to fade and get that weird crinkly texture to it. It's kind of gross, I don't like it. Meh. And for $4.25 <laughs> for a pen, I hope I like it. Next up is the Sharpie paint marker, which I couldn't find anywhere. So I had to buy it on Amazon and I paid way too much for it, I'm sure. <laughs> This is like the last Sharpie one I tested, but this one is oil-based. Ooh, one has a much finer point. Other end, perfect. I don't know if this one needs to be prepped. Hmm, it's kind of disappearing. Oil base. Well, this one's a bit of a disappointment. <laughs> I don't know if it's old. I had to buy this on Amazon and it cost me $5.23. Not a weird number. <laughs> like it starts off really white. I don't know if you can see that. And then it just fades into nothing. It's almost like writing invisible messages. Yeah, it's really, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, unless you're looking for this sort of effect where you can, you just want a lighter version of something, but it's consistent. All right, let's try it on the alcohol marker. Yep, it does the exact same thing. I don't know what this pen's for. It just fades into an oblivion. Where is it? It also has a bit of a smell to it, which isn't pleasant. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. Oh, oh, wait. See, like the, the ink is definitely white, but it just goes bye-bye. Well, that one's a disappointment. I had high hopes for this one. All right, what do we have? We have one left. Oh, don't fail me now, Mr. Expensive Marker. The last one and most expensive one, mostly because I could only find it on Amazon, is <laughs> the Derwent Graphic Line Painter. So I guess this is probably more easily accessible in the UK, but here it cost me $8.45. Eek, for one pen. This one I believe is also paint. Yeah, it's a water-based pigment painter with a Japanese nib. So this works much like the Sharpie oil-based one, but the ink is water-based. And it cost me, like I said, $8.45 for one pen. Eek. It's not impressing me. <laughs> this doesn't feel like something I would pay that much for. And everyone in the UK is going to be like, what? That's like a dollar pen. You paid way too much for that. I'm like, well, I needed to test it. Okay. And I'm not loving it either. It definitely acts more like the, in the $2 range. That's good dots though. It does better dots than any other $2 pens. Oh wait, no, the glaze pen did really good dots. That glaze pen is getting way more vibrant and I'm starting to really like that one. Ooh, if you go too fast with this one, it cannot keep up. But better, okay. And then test it on the alcohol marker here. Seems to show up pretty good. And then the watercolor. Yeah, I am not impressed for how much I paid for this. <laughs> I probably shouldn't classify it as an almost $9 pen. Um, let me Google and see what that's actually worth. So the cheapest online I was able to find this is maybe $4 if you get it in a pack, but then it, you don't really get to pick the colors. And, and obviously you want the one that's in the snow if you're looking for a white gel pen. And the cheapest is about $4, if, but that's in a pack when you have to get four of them. So hmm, this one is definitely a bit of a letdown. Yeah, even at $4, what that puts it, that still puts it as one of the most expensive ones here. So yeah, bit of a disappointment with the graphic line painter. So to review here, <laughs> after testing all 12 of these different white paint pens and gel pens, um, I think I've come to a bit of a conclusion here. Definitely the Uniball Signal Broad is still one of the best. The, the glaze pen was something that I'd never tried before and I was really impressed. And the fact that it's only $1.80, so it's one of the cheaper ones, 
Um, I think it definitely is just a little bit better than the classic gel pen, in my opinion, just because you can get the more clean um, filled in shapes like the square, whereas with the classic one, it's a bit scratchier. Um, but if you like a scratchier gel pen, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> go for the classic. Um, the two that I definitely don't recommend are the oil-based Sharpie paint marker. I do not like the angelic, the Uniball angelic. I don't know what you call this. The Uniball Signo angelic one. Didn't like that one at all. Like it's just very inconsistent and just not a fun pen to use. Also the Art and Fly one is just way too overpriced for being about as good as the $1.35 Secura Classic Jelly Roll pen. They're kind of the same pen. <laughs> so go for the cheap one, obviously. Um, I was I really like the water-based Sharpie paint marker. I'm going to probably be using that in the future for any times that I need large areas of white filled in. That one was really cool. I was hoping this one would be that, but that just didn't really live up to it. And I liked the Posca paint marker when I was using it, but now that I've stepped back and I'm comparing the results with the Sharpie one, I like the Sharpie better than the Posca and the Sharpie was cheaper. So yeah, although the Posca is supposed to have a finer point, but they look very similar here. Where were those? What, this is the Posca and then the... Oh, I see. So the Posca has a bit of a finer point at the end, whereas the Sharpie is rounded. So if you need it to be finer point, then I would go with the Posca, but I think the results, I really prefer the Sharpie in that one. And even over like watercolor, the Sharpie did better. Although the Ray May actually did really well over things. It did a lot better than over the black, which is interesting. <laughs> so yeah, that is, <laughs> as for which one is the best, which I'm kind of sad to say this because it's the one I've been using. Here's my baby. It's the Uniball Signo Broad White Gel Pen. Seems to be, after testing all of these, the best one. And like it has a good price point too. And it lasts you a pretty long time. I was hoping to find like a whole new answer. I was really, I had such high hopes for this guy. I had really high hopes for this guy, but he kind of just blended into the crowd. Like wasn't the worst, wasn't the best. Did really good. It was definitely juicier than some of the other ones. So maybe it'll last longer. I don't know. I haven't used it for a long time, but yeah, it's a good pen if you want a funky looking thing to put on your desk. <laughs> Yeah, I hope maybe you learned something. Hopefully some of these tests helped you figure out which of these gel pens or paint markers is best for you. I think I can officially say that this is the best white gel pen for me and for what I want to use it for. However, it really doesn't work on watercolor very well. It has that weird, it had a weird discoloration. If you see right here, barely opaque on watercolor and it creates almost like a discoloration on the outside of the line, but it works really well on alcohol-based marker. So if you're looking for something to use on watercolor, the best one is the Sharpie water-based one and Posca pen. And I guess actually the Decores. Look at that. I didn't even think of that. This one worked the best as this is the best gel pen for watercolor but this is a better gel pen overall, if that makes sense. Yeah, I guess there's no right answer. I tried to find one. <laughs> I think this is my favorite though. And then I'll have this guy as a backup, basically. Yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope you got some information for your noggin about what gel pen is best for you. And if anything, you learned maybe which one's not to buy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys all next week. And I hope you have a delicious evening. Bye. Thank you.